In this lecture, we will be studying about the post correspondence problem. In the previous lecture, we studied about an undecidable problem, which was the halting problem, and we saw how the halting problem is an undecidable problem. Now, in this lecture, we will be seeing about the post correspondence problem, which is also another undecidable problem. So this post correspondence problem is an undecidable decision problem that was introduced by Emil Post in 1946. So this person Emil Post was the one who introduced this post correspondence problem. And then the name Post comes from this name Emil Post. Now let us see what actually is this post correspondence problem or PCP. So here I will show you an instance or an example of the post correspondence problem in order to understand what this problem actually is. So in this post correspondence problem, or in short, we'll call it PCP, we have something called dominoes. So dominoes are this kind of tiles that we have. They are sometimes called tiles and sometimes called dominoes. So we shall be calling them dominoes. And in this dominoes, as you see, there are two parts, the numerator and the denominator, or the top part and the bottom part. You can call it anyway. So here we see that in this first domino or this first tile, we have B on the top and C A at the bottom. And then in this domino, we have A at the top and A B at the bottom. And so on, we have two more dominoes. So altogether, we have these four dominoes. Now let us see what is the task that we need to do. So our task is we need to find a sequence of dominoes such that the top and bottom strings are the same. So we need to arrange these dominoes in such a way that the top part and the bottom part of these two strings are the same. That means if you combine these symbols on the top and then the symbols on the bottom and if you write them, the top symbols and the bottom symbols should be the same. That means they should form the same string. And then the rule is that you can arrange these dominoes in whichever way you want and each domino you can use any number of times that you like. We are not restricted to use one domino only once but you can use even the same domino numerous times. So we need to find a finite sequence such that the bottom and the top string should be the same. And mind it, it should be a finite sequence. So let us see how can we have the solution to this set of dominoes that we have. So here is the solution to this set of dominoes. So first of all, let's see which is the domino with which I should start. So you should always start with a domino in which the first symbol on the top and the first symbol on the bottom are the same. Otherwise, in the first place itself, we cannot form a string that is same at the top and the bottom. So if you look here in this one, in the first domino, the top symbol is B and the bottom symbol is C. So you have B and C over here. So since they are not the same, you cannot use this. And if you see for this third and fourth dominoes also, the first symbol on top and the first symbol on the bottom are not the same. So we are left with only one choice that is this second domino, A by AB. So we see the first top symbol and the first bottom symbol are the same, AA. So this is the first domino that I will be using. So I put it here and then we see that I have got A here on top and we have AB at the bottom. So you remember our main task, our main task is to form the string in such a way that the top and the bottom are the same. So now you have A at the top and A, B at the bottom. So what you are having is an extra B at the bottom. So now you have to search for a domino which can give you a B at the top. So that should be your next one. So which is that? We see that out of all these choices, it is only this one that has B beginning at the top. So I will be using this domino over here. Now I have A, B on top and A, B, C, A at the bottom. So we have an extra C, A over here. Here it is A, B, A, B and at the bottom you have C, A which is extra. Now in order to cancel out this C, A, we need to find a domino that has C, A on top. And which is that? It is this one. So I put it here C, A by A. Now on top we have A, B, C, A. And on the bottom we have A, B, C, A, A. So there is an extra A over here. Now, in order to find the next domino, we need to find a domino which has A on top. And it is this one. So I put it here. So we have A by A, B. So on top now we have A, B, C, A, A. And on bottom we have A, B, C, A, 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 B. Now we see that this A, B is extra. So we need to find something that will give us an A, B on top. So the only one is this one. So we have A, B, C by C 
A, B, C by C. Now, if you put it in this way and if you write them down, you see on the top we have A, B, C, A, 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 B, C and the bottom one, if you write it, it is A, B, C, A, 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 B, C. So, you see that the top and the bottom are the same. So, we have found the solution to this set of dominoes in this PCP. So, you saw that right now we have just solved this problem, but I was saying that this problem is undecidable. So, we will see why is it undecidable as we move further. So, for now, let us take another example. So, here is another example of a PCP or a post correspondence problem. So, here this is another way of representing a PCP. In the previous example that we took, we were given the tiles or the dominoes directly, but sometimes you can be given tables like this. So, in the table, you have A, B over here and you have 1, 2, 3 over here. So, what this means is that this A represents the top part of your domino and B represents the bottom part of your domino and this 1, 2, 3 represents your domino numbers. So, this means the first domino has 1 on top and 1, 1, 1 at the bottom and the second domino has 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 on top and 1, 0 at the bottom and so on. So, this is how the dominoes will look like if you draw them. 1 by 1, 1, 1 for this first domino and the second domino is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 by 1, 0 and then the third domino is 1, 0 by 0. Now, let us try to find a solution to this PCP. So, I will write like this A and B. So, A represents the numerator and B is the denominator. So, let us see how can we do this. So, I already told you we should always use dominoes that has the same symbol for the first in the top and the bottom. So, we can use either domino 1 or domino 2. So, there are many possibilities that you can try out to find out the solution. So, first let me use this domino 2. So, it is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 by 1, 0. So, it is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 by 1, 0 and this is domino number 2. Now, here we see that the first two symbols 1, 0 and 1, 0 they are matching. Now, what we have is an extra 1, 1, 1 on top. So, we need to find a domino which can give us 1, 1, 1 at the bottom and we see that that is domino number 1. So, here I will use domino number 1, 1 by 1, 1, 1, 1 by 1, 1, 1. So, that was domino number 1 that we used. Now, we see that the first five symbols 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 are same in the top and also at the bottom and what we have is an extra 1 in the numerator. So, I need to find some domino which will give me 1 in the denominator to fill this 1 over here. So, I can use domino number 1 again. So, if I use domino number 1 again, so it will be 1 by 1, 1, 1. 1 by 1, 1, 1. Now, we see that this was domino number 1 that I used and now up to here, it is the same. We have the same string at the top and the bottom and what we have is an extra 1 in the denominator. Now, what I can do is, I can use domino number 3 which will give me this 1 and the numerator which will cancel out this denominator and then 0, 0 which will fill in for the rest. So, if I use domino number 3, I'll have 1, 0 by 0, 0. This is domino number 3. Now, if you look at this, the top part of the strings and the bottom part of the strings are the same and you see that I have used domino number 1 two times. So, this is what I said you can use any domino any number of times. So, here since we found that the top and the bottom are the same, so we have found a solution to this PCP. Now, I said in the beginning that this is an undecidable problem, but in the first two examples that we took, we saw that we were able to solve this PCP. Now, why do we say that this is undecidable? So, that will be clear to you when we take the next example. So, let us go to the next example. So, here is another example of a PCP. So, the representation is the same like the previous example. We have the numerator and denominator represented by A, B and then we have the dominoes 1, 2 and 3 and this is how you can represent them. Now, let us try to find the solution to this PCP. So, here how do we start? So, here we see that in domino 1, the first symbol on the top and bottom are the same. So, we can start with domino number 1. In domino 2 and 3, that is not followed. So, we cannot start with 2 or 3. So, we have to start with 1. So, 1, 0 by 1, 0, 1. So, this is what I have. Now, we see that after we have started with domino number 1, for the next domino that I can use, I have 3 possibilities or 3 choices. 
either one itself or two or three. Now let us put all these three and see which possibility is going to work out. So let's say that I use one again. So following this one zero by one zero one, if I use the first domino again, so what happens? One zero by one zero one. Now if I do this, we see that up to here the first three symbols are okay. One zero one, one zero one. But after that, you see that here zero is there and below the zero we are getting a one. So we cannot use this. So this was the first possibility. Now let's go to the second possibility. Now the second possibility is that we again started with the domino number one. So it is one zero by one zero one. And then we have already tried by putting one again over here and it did not work. So the second possibility is that after starting with this one, we can put domino number two and see what happens. So if I put domino number two, which is zero one one by one one, zero one one by one one. So here we see that the first symbol is okay. The second one is okay. But from the third, it is not same. Here we are getting zero. Here we are getting one. So this also is not a right possibility. Now we can have the third possibility. Let me write it over here. So in the third possibility, what we can have is we can start with this domino number one again, one zero by one zero one. And then we have tried putting one and two. It did not work. So after this first one, let me try putting three. So if I put this domino number three here, it will be one zero one by zero one one. One zero one by zero one one. Now if you look here, the first one, two, three, four, five symbols are okay. One zero one zero one here also one zero one zero one. So it is fine till here and we have an extra one over here. Now let us see if we can continue and get this as our solution. So we have extra one in the denominator. So we need to get something which will give us a one in the numerator. So what starts with one in the numerator? We have domino number one, which is one zero by one zero one. But if I use this one, one zero by one zero one. So you see that this part is going to get wrong here. Zero and one will come and our solution cannot be correct. So this is not a possibility. So instead of that, what can we use? We cannot use two anyway because two gives us a zero. But we, what we need is a one over here. So the only possibility left is domino number three again. So if I use domino number three, one zero one by zero one one, one zero one by zero one one. So again, all this portion till here is correct and it is the same. And we are left with one in the denominator again leaving us with the same situation that we faced just now. So the only possibility will again be domino number three. Then again, I'll have to write one zero one by zero one one. And you see that this sequence is going to continue. We are going to be left with one as extra in the denominator. And the only possibility we can use is domino number three. And if we use domino number three, this will continue and it will be an infinite thing and it will not come to a halt. So this particular PCP does not have a solution. So here we see that all PCP cannot be solved. Some of them, as we saw above, were able to be solved, but some PCPs like this cannot be solved. Now, it is impossible to have a generalized algorithm into which if we pass a PCP and it will tell us whether that PCP is solvable or not, because sometimes it is going into loops like this. So that is why we said that the PCP is an undecidable problem. So we will see the proof of the undecidability of the post correspondence problem in the next lecture. So I hope you understood about the basics of PCP. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.